You didn't think I'd leave you hanging, did you? Me posting a video about the prematurely failing flight controllers of the Emacs Tiny Hawk 2 and then just leaving you there? No, here I am. So I did some investigation and then we have some great news because I figured out why these flight controllers are prematurely failing, uh, specifically the ESCs. So this is what's going on. The ESCs that are built into the flight controllers have an amp rating that is not high enough to sustain the amp draw of the motor of the Tiny Hawk 2. So when I posted that last video about the prematurely failing flight controllers, a couple of you were pretty quick to um, address or remind me that the flight controller on the Tiny Hawk 2 is the same as the flight controller on the Tiny Hawk Freestyle 2. So you wonder or infer why the, the flight controller is failing if it's um, only on one and not the other and it's the same flight controller. So the reason why has to do with the motors that it's paired with. So the flight controller does not have any fault or issue with it on its own. It has to do with the collaboration with the motor that it's paired with. So with the Tiny Hawk 2, that has a KV rating of 16,000 KV, whereas the KV rating on the Freestyle 2 is only 7,500 KV, and some were shipped with 7,000 KV. And so you can see significantly higher KV motor on the Tiny Hawk 2. With all else being equal, particularly the motor size, when you increase the KV rating, the amp draw of that motor increases drastically as well. And so we can, we can see that the amp, basically when you're running the Tiny Hawk 2 hard, you're demanding amps more than the ESC on the board can handle. And so with the Tiny Hawk Freestyle 2, there's a larger tolerance because the ESC amp rating is this and the uh, amp draw of the motor is this. Whereas on the Tiny Hawk 2, the amp draw of the motor and the ESC uh, limit on the, amp, on the amps of the ESC is tight or maybe even over. Or sorry, uh, the ESC amp rating may be less. So that's why we're seeing failures of that. Okay, so to better understand this, because some of you may be lost already, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, link a description in the description below about something that I've come across um, in my previous video that has to do with RC cars. So some of you who are subscribers, uh, who follow some of my RC car stuff, know that I uploaded a video recently about how to modify um, a brushed motor setup to brushless. And so why it is uh, relevant to this video regarding the Tiny Hawk 2 has to do with how the components come together. So um, we will have more detail in that video, but I wanted to go over just kind of summarize using a metaphor. Okay, so follow me here. So the motor we're gonna refer to as our baby, our kid. So our kid has a lot of demands. It wants to go to the playground, they want candy, I want a Bakugan, I want this, I want that. And so the motor is the, is, is the baby and it's demanding these things that we're gonna call amps. It doesn't demand them to us directly. It goes through our wife, our spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, whoever, um, who is the ESC, okay? So you can see how the relationship between the ESC and the motor is. The motor is requesting amps and the ESC needs to have enough tolerance to tolerate that demand. If the ESC or my wife can't tolerate the demands of our child, then she will figuratively and literally burn out. And that's kind of the end of it. If she can handle the tolerance of the demands of our child, then that message or those demands gets relayed to us, to you and me who are the battery, okay? So we respond and so we need to have our own tolerance. And so our tolerance level or amp rating needs to be at least as high as the demands of the child. Otherwise we will burn out, right? So in that example, uh, we're going to respond, us the battery, we're going to respond in terms of RPM that gets generated through the ESC to the motor and the motor starts spinning. And so the side effect is heat. So heat can uh, ruin ESCs and can ruin motors as well. But the point of me describing this is if you get nothing out of this, just know that the ESC amp rating needs to be higher than that of the amp rating on the motor. And with the Tiny Hawk 2, they are either too tight or the ESC amp rating is actually slightly below. So how do we know that? So I suspected this and uh, brought this up in the Facebook groups and one person uh, mentioned something regarding something that Emacs had published themselves. And so I want to read that to you right now. 
So it says, so I'm reading from the Emacs page and I'm going to put this on the screen. And it says, it has come to our attention that some pilots are not heeding the yellow and black warning card that comes with the Tiny Hawk 2, which states that when switching between 1S and 2S LiPo operation, both the PID profile and the rate profile need to be changed via the OSD. Please note that while the PID profile should automatically switch based on 1S or 2S LiPo usage, rate profile does not change automatically. For proper flight characteristics and to keep your drone within warranty, it is vital that you change the rate profile to match 1S or 2S LiPo usage. Rate profile 1 for 1S LiPo and rate profile 2 for 2S LiPo. This is because there are throttle curve limit settings incorporated into the rate profile for each respective LiPo voltage, whether 1S or 2S LiPo voltage. So they mention nothing about ESCs. However, we know this relates directly to ESCs, even though they're not saying it out loud because they can't, otherwise there'll be a big recall, has to do with the fact that they're basically limiting how high of a rate you can have on your quad. So if you've been in the whole FPV industry for any length of time, you're gonna watch videos and you're gonna know that the standard operation for quads is for pilots or owners of these quads to change their rates to match what's comfortable with them, okay? So the PID profile is completely different than the rate profile, okay? So PIDs have to do with the flight characteristics of the specific quad. You can't have one PID profile or PID rate for one quad that will work for a different quad. They, they're specific to the quad. Whereas the rates is specific to the pilot and where you add expo, where you change your rates, your super rate, all those things, we're expected to do that. It is an industry standard to be able to and to be expected to change the rates. Yet Emacs is stating here that for 2S operation, we cannot use the 1S rates, okay? So they are limiting what rates we can use. And it, it makes sense, right? They would set 1S rates and 2S rates because a 2S, it's gonna be a little bit more powerful and you may wanna to tone things down a little bit. When you are operating on 1S rate profile, but using a 2S battery, it's basically allowing you to move the sticks more than you would normally if it was on the 2S um, profile, rate profile. And so you're overwhelming the ESCs, <laughs> okay? But they're not stating that. So what that does is when you're, when you're run, again, when you're running 2S batteries, but you're using the 1S rate profile, you are demanding too much amps from the motor to the ESC. And that is what's causing the ESCs to blow. Okay, and so let's go to the yellow and black um, warning message that we're referring to, that they were referring to. And I'm gonna quote, when plugging in a 2S LiPo, set the Tiny Hawk 2 on PID Profile 2 and Rate Profile 2. Profile 1 is tuned for 1S LiPos and will cause the drone to lose control on 2S. This makes sense, okay? But when you're reading this, I don't think anyone would be reading so deep into it to know that this actually means that the ESCs are not rated at an amp rating high enough to cover the motor, and therefore they're basically limiting us to certain rates so that we're not, ex we're not getting the amps up to the max of the motor. And so in conclusion, <laughs> I mean, before in my first video, I was trying to give Emacs the benefit of the doubt. You know, saying they're a good company and they're responding to, to user requests um, about you know, 200 milliwatt versus 25 milliwatt, you know, adjustable camera and all that. But this is starting to get into issues of ethics, okay? Because they're, they've created a flight controller with an ESC that cannot tolerate 
the amp draw of the motor that's on the craft. That is a problem. And so, you know, we can speculate about why, and I suspect it's that they want to use one board for the production line. It's just cheaper, it's easier, it's more efficient to create one flight controller for two different quads rather than increasing the ESCs on one flight controller specific to the motor. And so, you know, we can speculate that that's probably why they did that. And they're using these notes and that document that's from their website that you'd have to go searching for to basically say, you know, you as the customer, you're going beyond what we recommended. So it's your fault and we can't cover the warranty. And so I think that's, you know, that's an ethics issue because they're creating a product that does not, that, that the components don't jive and don't work well together and saying, Hey, you as the customer, you can't change your rates beyond this or that because, and they don't even say because, but basically it, we know it is because it puts, it draws too many amps out of the motor beyond what the ESC can handle. And so I know this video is for two groups of people, right? Okay, one group of you doesn't have the Tiny Hawk 2 yet and is doing your research on YouTube and seeing all, you know, the glamorous hyped up stuff about how it's great for beginners and all that kind of stuff and, you know, indestructible frame and blah, blah, blah. And so <clears throat> you're watching, you know, maybe my part one video now part two and you're wondering what do you do? Okay, so my answer to you is if you're if you insist on buying it, okay, I, I still don't like Emacs and I like Emacs even less now because of the whole ethics issue. But if you insist for whatever reason to go with Emacs Tiny Hawk 2, I would recommend strongly that you run it on 1S only. And if you are going to run it on 2S, that you change the rate profile to 2S and you do not mess with it. If you do, you can make the rates slightly lower, slightly higher, but don't change it to a point where it's anything like rate profile one, because you will burn out an ESC and we've seen that time and time again. Every two weeks, there's someone on Facebook groups who complains about their motor twitching and they go through all the troubleshooting and they think it's a motor and then they order the motor and they replace the motor and it still twitches and they go into BL Heli to make sure their ESCs are okay and then they, they calibrate their motors and they do this and do that. And at the end of the day, uh, even though the ESCs do show up in BL Heli, it doesn't mean that it's not still failing. And so they end up having a failed board and need to replace it. And then the new people come on to the Facebook groups and they're not digging enough, deep enough um, into the history and previous discussions to see the trend. But every two weeks it's happening over and over and over. So I, I, would, I would just say be very careful about how you use the Tiny Hawk 2 if you decide to get it. Um, do not be too aggressive with it because the more aggressive you are with it, the more amps you're going to draw from the motor. And we know that the ESCs, there's a tight threshold. So if you get too tight to the limits of the ESC in terms of amps, then it's going to blow. Okay. The second group of people who are listening to this video are people who uh, already have the Tiny Hawk 2. And now you're like, uh, what do I do? <laughs> so don't let this video or this news bring you down. I mean, we get into this hobby to be excited about flying. And for the most part, people in this industry, um, hobbyists, you know, even professionals are going to be pretty good about helping each other out. And so it is a fun hobby. Um, and you did get into it for a reason. And so go ahead and fly it. Um, but do go by the recommendations. And if you're in, in using 2S, which again, I don't recommend, but if you do, then use RAID Profile 2 and don't adjust it too much, um, unless you know what you're doing. Because again, if you, are, if you are using it such that you're drawing too many amps from the motor that's beyond the amp rating of the ESC, then it's gonna blow. And we, we've seen that time and time again. And I think um, I'm not that popular of a YouTube channel, so not everyone's gonna see this video and it's gonna to continue to happen. But um, those of you who have taken the time to, to research and who've, who've taken the time to listen to me, um, just, just be careful with your craft um, and that's it. So again, glad we figured this out and so we can finally conclude what's going on. All right, we'll see you next time. Take care, bye.